point into a win. Yeah, and that's we, what was really exciting. We talked a lot about the mistakes they made, but of course we always have to go uh, for the capitalization from Team Secret to still uh, be able to find a pick like that. Puppy especially, the swaps were completely on point of that. And uh, now we move into game two with their one to zero lead. Absolutely, Vici versus Secret game two. This is it, folks. The best of five grand finals here for Captain's Draft 4.0. Lone Druid, definitely the standout hero for me here, along with that Magnus. It's a potential Huskar cheese pick too. Lana and Brewmaster. Uh, Huskar Wiss, also a Huskar oh. Oracle. Goodbye. There's a lot of, I feel like there's a lot of heroes in this pool that we haven't seen much yet this tournament. Bounty Bane. Hunter could be picked to fill in the gaps a little bit. Really haven't seen very much Death Prophet. This might be the first pool we've seen Oracle on the main stage. I can't think of too many others. She was pro he's probably there, just nobody touched him. Yeah. Just don't care. You would think these Lone Druids, Huskars, and Razors might be out pretty early. There's also the Magnus that we've seen really key a couple of drafts throughout mm -hmm. this tournament. So. A lot of good support support supports. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So I was just thinking. Lion, Witch Doctor, Bane, Bane. Night Sucker. There is also an anti that Rubik. we saw picked early on, uh, very on like the second pick, I think, of an earlier game in the tournament. And yeah. I think in a limited pool, this hero, would, depending on the other cores you're up against, or if people can put together this kind of fast draft, which we've seen teams really struggle to do, has uh, added value as well. Purge, what do you think about the drow right now? We've seen a couple teams gravitate towards that pick. Uh, we saw one team grab it first. We've seen it picked last. Um, has has Drow been successful at all through this event? It doesn't feel like it, though. I don't have that stat in think front of me. So. From for the games I've watched, I feel like she hasn't done very well. Um, I definitely think she needs to be picked later. Yeah. Um, and her lane advantage that she gives, it's so pathetic right now. It's three damage at level one. So, I mean, ideally, in a best case scenario, the off laner is either killed or zoned often. She gets a fast level six, and then you can better help out your team a little bit faster. But mm -hmm. I feel like it's been hard to get to that position. I think Beachy Gaming and most pro teams do still value her yep. because of those reasons that they can, even if they know that they're not going to do great in the late game, they can get play this like perfect 30 minute game and have so much advantage that it doesn't matter she's a little bit weaker later. They'll have all this discipline when they go high ground and she's good at killing towers. So I think um, she still has potential. I, I definitely struggle to see her excellence yep. as I feel like the average pub player does as well. But I'm sure there's a good reason. With the uh, idea of any mage maybe lacking some of those catch counters, the uh, Storm Spirit's also still in the pool here. Hmm. Yeah, another good one to bring up. A lot of these heroes we've talked about now getting banned out. We didn't mention Weaver, but uh, too much. And yesterday, that was one of the key heroes. So Paparazzi had a really standout performance, dying yep. only once in that uh, second game against OG. Should be the Lone Druid here, I would assume. Uh, and then we will begin our picking phase. I, mean, I assume we'll see Mag with Razor. Um, Rubik most likely. Some feedback. Yeah. Jack, what do you think here, man? Are you, you into anything still, here? You like that DP? I think they're a little worried. I mean, there's still the Oracle that goes with the Huskar. Um, there's a lot of different ways to go. With the Anti-Mage out, I think that makes something like Pugna more of a choice as well. Yeah. If there's one team that's ever been very good with Huskar, it's definitely Secret. Okay. Well, so that'll be removed. Like Peachy, you've done some homework here. And a quick first pick, Razor, for Team Secret. Decent way to deal with the bear. Uh, so now they kind of guard themselves up against uh, Avicii Gaming Lone Druid and still leave the option for themselves. Razor feels like the core version of Disruptor in Captain's Draft, where it, you can't really go wrong by grabbing him first in a lot of pools. He fits in with a lot of different drafts, very strong laner, doesn't have a lot of hard counters. He definitely doesn't, he has less things that he excels against is the only big negative, that he's not always going to farm super fast mm -hmm. um, and sometimes does just get out carried late game. Poor staff kind of just counters him in a lot of cases too. That's true. Bane, pick up. Bane plus one. What a hero. This guy's been so stable for a while now. Is Great there? position five to just roam around. I thought there was a Rasta in the pool for a second. Oh, oh come on now. Yeah, I know. We would need him. Oh, but Bane so, also quite good. We've noticed like BKB piercing disables has also been a, uh, a rare treat in a lot of these drafts. So lane bully that Vici likes quite a bit. Something they might look to later in the draft or to protect uh, would be something like a sniper against Razor. This is a that some teams pick up thinking that's a good matchup. Yeah, Sniper or Weaver, probably two of the better, at least cores left in terms of dealing with that link. Deciding. Avicii thinking hard about this. I think banned, yeah, Weaver's banned. So. Oh, that's right. Oh, well, that, that would be an issue then. Probably not going to get that one. Hmm. I mean, I feel like something like, I mean, maybe Night Stalker is too. Okay, they'll go for an Earthshaker instead. 
Stunts and Rubik, are good. And, the and the Rubik right away. No oh. surprise there. Rubik against the Earthshaker. I a mean, classic. It's Yapsor. And Come it's Yapsor. Now. That too. If yeah. they get Rubik and Better on Druid, you. I don't even need to see the rest of the draft. Yeah. I think I'm good. It's also just Rubik. Rubik's just really good right now. Um, you know, increase your team's magic damage, stuff like that. Very effective. There's still a lot of like major strategy elements left in this draft, right? We still have Magnus. There's possibilities for Empower strategies. There's IO possibilities you might go into. The Night Stalker that you discussed in terms of like maybe some early aggression, playing around Vision. Yeah, I feel like Secret can easily grab Night Stalker here, but they may want to wait a little bit just to wait till they see uh, some cores out of Ichi. Because Night Stalker is very good against Bane. I'd say good against Earthshaker, but if you have a Rubik and a Night Stalker and they don't match up well against whatever cores you're against, then it can be tough. There is a Magnus Ursa. I guess since you pick up the Razor, that kind of deters a potential Ursa pick for Vici, but another one of those combos. Things are tense, man. You're just, you know, you're looking at this game. It really what is. happened in the last match. Trying to figure out, like, okay, what, like, what did we go wrong with? You know, maybe could we have had something better to secure Roche? You know? mm -hmm. uh, do we need a better way to force down towers so we can keep up some sustainability, something like that? Uh, why, why did our... 15k lead suddenly evaporate. I really think it just came down to because Vichy wasn't quite all together while they had Chrono up. They, they were a little bit too spread out. There were a couple openings. They got a couple kills and it just snowballed with a little bit of sloppy play. They do go for the Night Stalker. Super good Bane solution. You should always be able to find him in fights. If you get gripped, you have two spells that can interrupt it. So it makes that a lot more limited. Still Bane very good as a hero, but Night Stalker definitely makes him harder to play. Uh, Death Prophet the, for the Vichy pick. It's a hero that doesn't really rely on um, her right-click damage. Um, she can ulti Spirit Siphon the Razor and still be semi-competitive there, but it's a little scary, I would say. But definitely still works well. I mean, if you're looking at like a lane matchup still left in the pool, certainly one of the better opportunities for mm -hmm. them. And I think it, I mean, Vici's played DP quite a bit in the past, right? Yeah, definitely. She's just well-rounded. It's, it's like a safe, solid pick for everyone. You don't have to worry about it too much mid. Um, you can potentially gank. You can turn around a lot of these ganks as Night Stalker's on you. You're not as afraid as Death Prophet early on, so. But uh, Razor can lane pretty well against it if they choose to put the Razor mid. And it's Centaur. Okay. A big boy in the Ooh. off lane. Yeah, we have not talked much about that off lane pool, and no. it is quite low. Um, the Magnus is still there. Magnus and Axe, I think, are the big two. Obviously, Centaur and Death Prophet have a lot better synergy together with the Stampede, and DP yeah. just ro like roaming through the entire fight compared to something like Empower or RP. It doesn't sync up with her nearly as well. It's great against Razor as well. There's Stampede to run away from the Static Link. Night Stalker only has slows. Rubik will have a, uh, a stun, but um, max movement speed is really useful here. I feel like this encourages something like a Lifestealer pick again, as we saw a secret run last game. For what reason? Because it's okay against Centaur and Death a, Prophet? You have a vehicle, um, you have some, someone that goes in and yeah, against Centaur yeah. and Death Prophet as well. And you can really only use the Bane to disable him at that point. And this Night Stalker has become much better with Lifestealer uh, because of his Hunter in the Night being able to fly over the trees, over cliffs, just way more high mobility. Especially that really early like level 6 gank or something like that. Trying to enable him right out of the armlet, which is what Secret was definitely lacking last game. I mean, when they had Ace on that Lifestealer, he gets an armlet and he just has to just farm. That, that was it. He had to wait for an ogre to get into a shadow blade. Even that didn't help him that much. Then he needed that big chain stun with the Aghanim Scepter, and finally it was like Ace just came online. He was finally enabled by the rest of his team. And for lane, so you have a decent uh, mid matchup if you have the Razor in there, and then Razor is also one of the counters for Life Stealer as well. I really like the the Vici draft has a lot of heroes that break up team fights. Or right? like DP really excels in these long drawn out fights where she doesn't mm -hmm. get bursted, and they have a lot of unconventional saves. You know, no dazzle grave or something like that, but heroes that are just yeah. really good at stopping gap closers. But now sniper going to be the fourth for Secret. I just really wasn't sold on Life Stealer. I feel like it would leave Secret too lacking in terms of team fight because between Life Stealer, Night Stalker, Rubik, they have disables and stuff, but it's more like small skirmishes gank kind of uh, levels. It's not like you jump in and drop a Chrono Sphere. Even like dropping multiple Shrapnels gives you so much more teamfight control than what Life Stealer can produce, especially against Bane Fiend's grip. And yeah, he's good against Death Prophet Center War Runner, but they also have some advantages back the other way. So yeah, I think this is they needed some team fight to bring it together. They needed a carry that was kind of effective at staying away from them. Um, and as, as long as Sniper can stay at the back of the fight, doesn't get initiated on by like Centaur, I think this can work. We've seen them do the Sniper Enigma pairing a lot, actually, in Captain's Well, maybe not recently before is just something that protects you from being able to close the gap. Bit risky. Uh, this game, I would say, for the Enigma in terms of the black holes looks pretty difficult. 
You have long ranging silences. You got the Earth Shaker, you got the Bane. True. So, certainly going to be that BKB style of a game uh, and more about yeah. those, like, maybe solo pickoffs or something. It is nice for Vici. They have at least one tool to interrupt a BKB black hole if Bane's in the right position, but kind of need to be in the right place at the right time for that one to be a reality. This could be a safe uh, storm, perhaps. Um, again, you need someone yeah. that can get to the back. Not the best toolkit for disabling him, other than maybe the silence and lift. Yeah. Interesting. Yapsor has such a good game here. A lot of good spells to steal. Yeah, that's really true. Of course, he's uh, very good at going off in those kind of games. That's kind yeah. of his thing, you know? So this is, a, this is a really tough last pick for Vici. Uh, it's not going to be the life stealer. It's the storm, so Jack calls it. Well done. He could kind of get out of hand this game, that's for sure. Uh, Razor basically can't do anything against Storm Spirit, as long as Storm is mana, so it kind of comes down to whether or not Yaps are on the Rubik, and the Night Stalker can uh, prevent him from going crazy, maybe a lot of early ganks. I definitely think that'll be the pressure area for Seeker to go. All right, predictions. What do we got, Trent? We're starting with uh, you this time, buddy. Uh, I'm going to have to go with the Secret Draft. I yep. like the Yapsaur Rubik, a classic. Uh, I'm not super sold on the Centaur and the DP. I feel like Secrets have a little bit of an edge here. Purge? Uh, I agree with Secret. I, I think they're, they, they've, they rounded out their lineup really good at the end. I think they have the better draft here. Jack? Uh, I'm going the opposite way. I, I like Vici. Um, I think there's a lot of ways to deal with this black hole. I think the Storm's going to have a really good game and be able to take over. I'm going to go in the secret camp as well. I, too, believe in the Yapsor Rubik, but we will see what happens here again. It's going to be Sunspan and Sindarin, our two casters for this Grand Finals. Game 2 starts now. Oh, boy. Well, Game 2, if, if Game 1 was any indication, this should be a, an okay best of five Grand Finals, <laughs> I think. Uh, we have a Centaur in the game, so I'm very excited about that, but at the same time, there's a Death Prophet who's been quite underwhelming in Captain's Draft, I want to say. So what's the... What's the bigger thing for you? Your hate for DP or your love for Centaur? Because they're in the I, same I, team. I wouldn't say I hate DP. It's like net, net zero? Uh, yeah. It, no, I think my, my love for Centaur is way out of hand. It's actually unnatural at some okay. point. But Storm Spirit, I agree with the panel. Storm Spirit has a very good game setup for him potentially. But at the same time, I mean, we saw the Rubik from Yapsor how many times now? A million? Yeah. And it's a good these Rubik are game. some of the best spells in the game. You get the zip from Storm Spirit. You get Fissure. You get an easy Fiend's Grip if you want from, from Bane. Just an incredible plethora of skills available for, for Yapsor to take advantage. Yeah, this is the type of game where you can definitely shine on Rubik, but at the same time, I'm happy for Vici that they last picked the Storm, because I think absolutely any other hero, and I would felt like they're just flat out outdrafted. But this hero, if it has a good game, I think can solve some of the problems that they had. Uh, I'm pretty sure Vici actually wanted the Sniper that Secret took, because that's one hero that they could take that has a good matchup against the Razor in the game and can distance himself from I hear like Enigma as well, uh, but Secret kind of covered their bases very nicely with with this draft. So, yeah, going to see how the lanes go for Vici Gaming. Um, heroes to really watch, watch out for in this game, in my opinion, are the Storm Spirit, as mentioned. I think Earthshaker can play a really big role. I think it's important that Lanham doesn't waste his Fissure because it's going to be necessary to try to cut off the Razor's advances to cancel Black Hole. And on Secret's lineup, Vision is going to be the name of the game here with both the Shrapnel and the Night Stalker. Vision advantage. Secret will try to play a game where they just flat out gain advantages in Vision and then get the better jump. If you just look at this from a flat teamfight perspective, Secret's teamfight is actually not that good. Like they, they have Black Hole, which is a great teamfight ability. Plasma Field deals some damage, but Rubik doesn't really have much to offer in teamfight unless he steals it. Night Stalker is an atrocious teamfighter, but gives Vision. Sniper is okay. When you look at the other side, there's like Echo Slam, Exorcism, Stampede, and even a Storm Spirit who has very few bad matchups in the game. So, Yep, that's definitely true. See if Secret can enforce that type of game plan. I, I think overall I have a pretty good feeling for Vici Gaming if, if Paparazzi gets off so to So is that start. your prediction? Yeah, Vici I think I, I will take Vici overall, but okay. only because they picked Storm, else I would have gone against them no matter what. Right. Yeah, not the greatest control for Storm. Secret, that is. Only... Until the black, or until Enigma was picked up, their only actual stun, other than the mini stun from actually Void, doesn't even have a mini stun anymore, right? It does at nighttime. It does at nighttime. It also does at daytime. I think it was a bug at one point. Oh, that was, it did. oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And then it got fixed. But the only actual stun. Oh, Paparazzi. This is a classic is storm mid game. Here. Tri lane mid. Tempting to TP out. It's going to be close one. He does get out. It's at his tier one mid. Now he just has to bring out a health cell. He'll be okay. But Fenner, he's kind of okay with this. He's going to get a lot of XP as a result. Although Paparazzi. Looks like he's still going to stick to the lane for now. Yep, so we're in mid one. See this, this enfeeble come into play for Fenrir. 
one of the more annoying spells in the game, to be sure. There's a Telekinesis and the right clicks. This should be first blood for Secret, unless you get the miss chance. He's gonna look through the trees. One more, and down he goes Yapsor with first blood. That's a scary proposition for Vici Gaming. This is one on of the they can steal this game. biggest benefits from a drafting perspective in having Razor is that he has a really great matchup against Centaur, so they don't need to do anything top. They can just try lane mid and not even feel bad about it. It's not like, oh, we're gonna get pressured in our safe lane. There's no way Ace oh, is gonna try lane. for it again. Telekinesis into the shrapnel. A second one comes in as well. The TP support in the form of Earthshaker's coming in. The brain sap, not nearly enough. Fenrir drops to the deck. Earthshaker didn't even bother finishing the TP, knowing there wasn't a whole lot he could do. I think he should have completed that, actually. I think he could have saved it and maybe got them a return kill even. Secret was starting to get into tower range, but he, he decided against it in the end. Of course, TPing in and having no impact is really bad, but... And might he might have been Malefist, actually. He's possibly he kind of in trouble TP here. Canceled. Yeah, the Malefist coming into play again. Eidolon's doing a lot of damage. Fissure, nicely done. And Lanamp should be okay. as a Spirit Siphon now for Ori. He doesn't want to waste too much time in the jungle. Really needs to get that farm and XP up in that bot lane. Which, by the way, didn't even mention that. Ori is in the bot lane with Death Prophet. You don't see that very often. Yeah, that is pretty unusual. I wonder why they put the DP bottom instead of mid. They, I feel like the safe lane storm and the mid DP might be better this game. Um, maybe they feel like, okay, Storm is our centerpiece. If we put him against Enigma, he's gonna lose farm, but look at what treatment he's getting mid. That's no better for him, yeah. for sure. And I don't think Storm's matchup against Enigma is that bad. He has really good base armor against the Eidolons. He can kill them with Remnant if he comes up close, so Enigma has to always be on his toes with Micro. Which is annoying when you're playing Enigma, you know, so you have to deal with that constantly. You're speaking about this top lane being a bad matchup for Centaur, but look at the CS. 9-6 to six for Centaur versus 11-5 and five on Razor. Yeah, he's doing surprisingly Not well. Not too bad at all. At the same time, this is also a, a Razor that has more creeps running into him, so... Should be like a 50% farm lead for the Razor. Yeah. And well, of course... Well, actually, I'm really impressed with how much Young Eleven has been able to do in this lane. I don't think it should be going this well for the Centaur. Luckily, you don't well, need auto attack damage. Luckily, for that he just killed edge. himself. It's going to be close, though. Wait, Ace the kill South comes out. Oh my double God. edge, young eleven. What a beast! <laughs> See that—that's the thing about Hoofstomp. That's so good. You love this spell. He missed it and got the kill because he baited Razor in. He's like, yeah. my stun is so bad that I missed it. <laughs> And then you can definitely kill me here. I mean, double, double edge, edge five second good. cooldown. I, I do like double edge. I will say that one of my favorite skills in the game. Very satisfying. Uh, and with that kill, young eleven. Despite I'm, the, the I'm odds so against impressed. him, he's showing a really good understanding of what his hero can get away with in this matchup. Obviously, double edge is his key to killing the razor. Razor will drain his damage, and he won't have much to do. But um, when you come in close and have this amount of damage, if if razor has to yield, he's not that scary anymore. When he's running away from you, he doesn't do anything. And young eleven. Big kill for him. I, I have to say, I'm so surprised that this happened. But yeah, you don't get to see that all too often. Yapsor is going to run into that very same Centaur, who's <laughs> looks like he really wants that bounty room, but it's not there. So he's just going to eat a tree and be on his way. And this is big, too. It's not just that he gets the kill and he gets a key item for this lane. I would say Tranquil Boots is definitely the way he can sustain himself in lane for sure. Like, Razor will keep trying to play aggressively and drain him. Whatever damage Razor does, a Young Eleven doesn't really care too much. He's going to heal it up afterwards, and he will find his moments of opportunity. And now that he has this, he can cast Double Edge off cooldown, just go on Ace and do some damage, heal it back up, and force Ace to buy regen, which is obviously annoying for this Razor. He wants to ramp up as fast as possible, like Phase Boots, Aquila. He needs to buy a couple salves along the way. It's not that great. And Young Eleven will be getting fast level 6 as well. Yeah, and Stampede this game is extremely good. Yes. Obviously the Enigma has a lot to cancel it, but other than Telekinesis, if, if it's a Night Stalker trying to get a gank off, that's not going to do a whole lot with Stampede available. They're seeing the Centaur really hate on Lan M here, who's level 2 on the Earthshaker at the moment. Pulling the creeps a little bit farther, trying to get the Fissure out here. Looks like he'll get a little bit of farm as a result. And Ori, getting close to level 5. Now 25 and 12 in the CS department for him, so... Essentially a free lane, I guess you could call it, in a lot of well, ways. It's free lane minus Enigma influence. And you have the hook stomp again. Yaps are not quite close enough right now as Young Eleven. Still working towards that, that level 6 for himself. And you can tell he's, he's, going, he's playing aggressive on Ace when he can. He did 400 damage time there. Got the stomp and the double edge off. Backed off, healing up with Tranquils. Oh, Yapso's actually going to run into him here. Has the vision. Yeah, he does. Telekinesis. Looks like he's faking that hoof stomp. And Ace. Continue the pressure. The plasma field's only level one, not dealing that much damage. One more right click will do it. He does have vision, and he will get the kill as a result. Of course, now they know there is a ward there, but definitely worth. That's worth sacrificing a ward for. Absolutely, paparazzi now level five in the mid lane, mid one. Looks like he's going to give up that rune, which is a double damage for paparazzi. 
course, once he hits six, that is a very scary rune to get. And we should, any stage of the game. We should mention for this mid lane that this is a very sniper favorite matchup until Storm hits level six. Like there's there's these matchups that are very intriguing to me, where one hero is bad against the other one in lane, and then is strong against it in game plan later on. This yep. is one of those examples where Storm loses matchups against a lot of heroes that he's actually really good against. Storm great against Sniper when he gets farm. Another good example would be Storm against Tinker matchup that we see pretty frequently, at least in pub games, because Tinker is being picked a lot right now. Try to counterpick it with Storm. Tinker gets a free lane, and then it's about, like, do you get a fast hex? Then Storm still is annoyed. But Sniper doesn't really have any tools. Like, what, what can he possibly buy so that Storm can't be annoying for him in the in the mid game, there is no item for Sniper like that. So they yeah. definitely have to protect mid one going forward now that Storm has had a this good laning stage. I'm saying that he has 30 CS minus 7, Sniper's 35. That is very good. But a lot of denies though from Sniper, so yes, the level advantage is definitely going the way of Sniper this Bottom time. Ori, Malifus applied. Not reaching. You black hole black. is available, but yeah, not, not quite in range this time. Yapsor, gonna hide in the trees at the moment, place a ward in nice fact. Ward. I like wards like these a lot. This is something we talked about. I'm not sure if it was yesterday or the day before. Oh, hang on. We got you know, the whole down force. We see Hosami into a double edge and Fissure to follow. Young Eleven and company will clean up that pesky razor. Mid one did TP here. He's going to get an assassin enough, but a nice nightmare and a stampede. BG will get away safely. Yep. The mid one back to farming, but this time in the top lane. Let's see if he traverses his way to another, another lane or not. So let's see if we have a little bit of time to cover what I was getting at here. So. Uh, we talked about it yesterday or the day before that these lane wards are becoming more popular where you place less quote-unquote ideal wards. You have maybe less map vision or it's not the best map vision you could have in the area. But because they're um, less easy to de-ward, sometimes it's better to have like maybe 75% of the vision or in a slightly worse area just knowing that you have it for the full duration. The chance that this ward of Yaps or bottom lane will get de in the next five minutes is really low. So, oh, got a Malphys on Ori again. Black Hole is available. Thoughts are not pursuing this with Night Stalker. They don't have enough damage. Yeah, Notice Poppy's lane. skill build, by the way. This is what do we got here? Two zero one, holding on to a skill. He was point. holding two skill points, actually. Mm. Oh, we have a nightmare TP support in the form of Night Stalkers here. That means that Young Eleven and company are getting out of dodge. Stampede not quite available yet for Young Eleven. It's going to get a hoof stomp off, but it's not going to connect because it is the worst stun in the game. Young Eleven on the run, half HP. Assassinate coming through. It's going to be close. He's going to get it. And that is a much needed kill from mid one. He is the top of the net worth charts right now, 3,700. If only he had level one boundless strike there, he definitely would have survived Sounds fan, am I right? Boundless strike? Yes, that's Monkey King stun. It would have been better, at least it's easier to hit. I mean, can well, that you... value 0. 0.4? <laughs> I always have these very passive aggressive comments towards Centaur as if I, I have a relationship with him. Ace. I know. It's the one hero you know how to play, so you have a feeling about it. You know, I was sixth all time on Centaur for. Okay, that's <laughs> that's quite the stat. <laughs> uh, right now, Slax is actually trying to beta test this the stat system for Valve. Hopefully, they're watching and they can improve the system as as best they can. Yeah, we definitely need them to change the system so it fits Slax better. That would be yep. why not? Why great not? improvement. Arcane boost right now on Paparazzi. Oh, so looks like we have a stampede. Fissures can't get up the hoof stomp. Oh, not yet, at least. That Nightmare. Horribly. Yeah, I'm not sure if they wanted the, the fissure on that side, but either way, it looks like Lan N gets Telekinesed. Secret will not be able to follow through, though. Hoof Stomp taken by, by Yap, so he's not going to be had. That's literally the worst spell you can get in this game, actually. Literally every other spell is like 10 times better in this game, I want to say. And Feeble is definitely better, JJ. Better than Feeble. You. I don't know. <laughs> don't shake your head. Young Eleven getting it's Static Link, but he's going to turn around the double edge. Lots of damages. Yapsor gets the okay, the Echo Slam solo from Lan M. Yapsor gets the hoof stomp off. It was a decent one, I won't lie. Double edge is oh. enough to help take him out. Look how low Vici are. So Yapsor was trying there. He got the lift off in the nuke and the hoof stomp, and he was trying to steal double edge, but the last spell cast by Old Eleven was the hoof stomp. If he had stolen double edge, though, that's a double kill. And maybe he even, I think he would have been killed by Fenrir after, but that would have looked really good. And been pretty big for him. He would have got full level, more or less, but... Is there a thing... I don't think is, there was a play for him there, actually. Is there There's such a thing, no like, let's say mid to late game, right? Mm -hmm. Are there too many good spells? Is that a thing for Rubik? You just have too many... Like, you can't even begin to understand which one to, to pick is up. Is this some of your rock, paper, scissors shit? Where it's, it's a mind like, game. No, like, it's not. It, it's more... There's so many to choose from. I, I it's don't like know a, what to do. Like Everything I do is really high impact, no, so I'm like, going to do none of them. It's like a, having a buffet, but you can't eat it all. You can only eat some of it. You're yeah. going to get too full. Isn't that great? <laughs> I am American. Yeah. So. <laughs>
I just end up eating it all anyway. Ori, level 9. Looks like Exorcism. When did he use that? Did I miss that? Uh, yeah, I missed it too, actually. I guess he did some damage to the bomb tower. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, this this stat box has no title or icon. It's just going to so stay up there the whole Val time? Val already having that hotfix. Thanks for that. I can't wait to see this no. He's going to be jungling for now. He is level 9. We'll see. Gets a nightmare off. Does Fenrir. Fiend's Grip is available. And zipping in is Paparazzi. And Ace... Looks like he'll find his way to the grave with one more right click. Fata with the black hole onto two. Yapsor's here as well. Has the Fade Bolt available to go. The Assassinate not quite enough to take out Paparazzi. Fenrir still on the run. It's going to be close as Young Eleven now. Looks like they will get that Bane. And I think that might be it as Young Eleven Malefist up. Lanem is here with Paparazzi. Being a little bit greedy, but taking that bounty rune for himself. Going to fill that bottle up. Puppy level 6 on his way up is Fata. Just getting spirits, I think, zipping in again. Nice assassinate for mid-1, though. Ends up being a 2 for 2 over this 30-second exchange. These fishers from Lightham have not been the best this game. He's generally on point. But has been hitting them a bit on the wrong oh, side. They get to pay the for it there. Crippling fear into the void. Ace with that plasma field assassinate coming through again, but they don't even need it. A double kill for mid-1. That is a hero you do not want to give up kills to this early on. And all of this was... I mean, this was a bit chaotic in the first place with everything that happened. I think the biggest thing for Secret is that Paparazzi died rather than mid-1 getting the kill. They want to slow down Storm's progression. And, uh, I think if, if the Fisher from Lanham is better there, Paparazzi doesn't even need to jump in the first place to try and secure that kill. But a little bit of a misplay, it gets punished. We have an Fenrir item. finds Puppy. Yep, puppy we have dead. A nightmare. Hoof stomp. Double edge. Zipping again from Paparazzi. That's more than enough damage to take Puppy to his grave. And they're actually going to zip in even further. Very little mana to speak of, but they really want this sniper. The telekinesis is there for Yapsor. Stampede to follow, though. They really want this mid one kill. And it looks like they'll find it. A double kill for Paparazzi. Another hero you don't want to get kills on. Yep. If you're well, secret. Get straight back into it there. And Blink Dagger was shown there, by the way, by Young Eleven. So. They will have that initiation possibility. He's, so, he's having such a good game on the Centaur. Yeah, that's probably the most surprising thing, I think, uh, for me in the first 13 minutes of this game, that Centaur did not get completely dumpstered in that He has lane. the same net worth as Razor. Um, yeah, that's That insane. is not what Secret were expecting, for sure, when they set these lanes up. Um, yeah, so the, 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 silver lining, the silver lining for Secret that fight is that they stole St. Pete at the end of it. So there is a, a play potential now for, uh, for Secret, maybe a smoke gank into Stampede with Black Hole could be an interesting play. That's a minute for that. That should be long enough time for Spell Steals to stay online. Yep, you will have it for sure. Uh, they can try to use it to get Razor in a great position for some draining. Oh, or he's going to use it right off the bat yeah, to initiate exactly onto the Earthshaker. He's crippling feared and will be brought down one way or the other. And Yapsor's like, oh, if only I had worse spells to choose from as he steals Fissure. <laughs> has a really big issue with this. I'm sure he would have loved to steal another spell than that. Well, think of, think of it, I'm, I'm more thinking about like 40 minutes in the game. You have like, like five spells at a time that you want, okay, and so you have to choose. I think you know I get I mean? your point here, is that you're, it's difficult to focus because there's so many different things you're looking for at the same time. And then the window's gone when you... I mean, I gave you the buffet analogy. I don't know why that wasn't good enough. But yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Okay. Puppy right You're wrong, now. though. I don't oh. think so. Nightmare. Oh, nightmare up, and this should be an easy kill. There's absolutely no members okay. of Secret around. Remember when Night Soccer was a tanky hero? No. I do. That was a long time ago. You can still be played as a core sometimes. Right I feel now, like it's Night very... Not yeah, it, I would say these days not, not so much. I mean, maybe in Captain's Draft, though. I'm a little bit surprised we haven't seen that, maybe. Uh, I mean, yeah, we've seen true. the mid-dazzle, the offlane ogre. The, the ogre worked, technically speaking. <laughs> I don't think it should <laughs> have, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, once he got the Aghanim Scepter, like you said, it's, uh, that was a game-breaking item pickup in that game. Yeah, and we were laughing when he got that kill for 1,000 gold outside the Radiant base and might have actually ended up winning them the game. Yeah, had he got that 1k bounty. Made a big difference. All right, Vici on the Prowl. Far away from a Blink Dagger on Shaker, so the initiation has to come through Young Eleven or a Fissure. Uh, Ace is going to run right into this smoke gank. The hoof sample miss. Nice fissure from Yapsor. And double fissure now coming up from the other side. And there's the Fiend's Grip. An easy kill onto Razor. Nice attempt from Yapsor, but not enough this time around. Steel Stampede will use it to get away. 
Always handy, being a Rubik in this situation, but he gets caught out for now. Hooks on cancel with the silence. Lots of damage coming out from the side of Ichi Gaming. Mid one in the meantime, though. Black Hole onto three heroes with Paparazzi. No mana to speak of. Death Prophet's gonna go down. Echo Slam comes out. It's a one for two. Death Prophet extremely low, gets Yules, and one right click takes him down from mid one. A nice turnaround there for Seeker. It looked bad at the beginning, but that Black Hole definitely turned it around a bit. There's just like, the, it, it's like, I have a really hard time remembering the last game I watched a Yaps or Rubik game, and there isn't a moment like this one. Like, this, he's always going to find some sort of, of way to make these plays. And, you know, that wasn't an aggressive play, but he ended up baiting the whole team into an awful position there for each game, just by stealing Stampede, he runs away, he anticipates the Blink Dagger from Centaur, he jukes off to the left side, and in order to kill him, they start clumping up on the left side and gets three-man Black Hole there by Fata, and that was without a Blink Dagger, by the way. Enigma just walked in and got a three-man hole. That is very unusual. Yeah, he doesn't even look to be going towards Blink anytime soon, at the very least. Gonna be finishing these drums, and it looks like BKB is on the horizon. It's two drums on the side of Secret. They're gonna have a lot of drum charges. Razor, or uh, rather, Rubik went drums as his first item as well. We have some TPs here. From Ace, he's gonna get zipped on right off the bat. Paparazzi with the stun. First one coming in, Silence onto two. Hoof Stomp, only gonna be on one hero. Assassinate coming through the Stampede, defensively used. Looks like Bane's gonna sacrifice his life for the betterment of his team. Plasma Field connecting on a few heroes. Looks like Ori's gonna drop with that. Yule's keeping him alive a little bit longer, but it's still a kill nonetheless. Secret, 2K lead, 17 and a half minutes in the game. It looks like a tier one will go their way. Ichi again, having these moments of, uh... I'm not, I'm not sure how to describe it. It's just... That was really not good. <laughs> they dove into this tower, they didn't have information about Seeker's whereabouts. Even they actually did have a ward between the towers and still chose to go on this really difficult kill. And you could tell that they weren't on the same page. Like his hesitation, Storm jumps in, he's like, this is probably a bad idea, jumps out. Young Eleven is like, no, it's a great idea, let me go in right after you jumped out. And there's like no follow up. And Vici just catches himself in this awful position and get punished really hard. Um, maybe starting to see a little bit of nerves from them. They've been really calm and collected, but. At last game, you need to not well, let it get to you and that, just reset. That's the question. We talked about this off, off uh, mic, I believe. The, the mental game, not, I'm not going down that road, don't worry, but the mental game where you have this massively, you don't feel like you could lose. We didn't think they could lose. You said 95 to 5, you would have been higher than 95% in that game. Yeah. What kind of mental attitude do you have to have after a game like that? I mean, you, the ideal thing you do is that you realize, okay, our draft was good, we played really well for a long time, and then we dropped the ball and we made a big mistake. And the, th the same thing is not going to happen in the next game, so we can't really spend too much energy on it. There isn't that much to learn from that game, except don't fuck up when you're old, you know? <laughs> so, uh, in this good game, lesson to learn. They, they just need to, you know, focus on the, the, all the things they did right and, and replicate it. In this game, they, they also had a lot of good moves. They're just making a couple of mistakes that just are not, it's not the same quality of gameplay as in game one from Vici, I feel, in this. Uh, so the question is if they manage to reset or if they're just a little bit less comfortable with the lineup that they have, the heroes that they're playing. Who knows? Who do you take late game on paper? Because you can go a lot of ways with this. Obviously, I think the biggest wild card in a scenario like that is actually the Rubik. Because, Rubik. like we said, some of these spells can be completely game-breaking just by stealing and using it in an effective manner. Yeah. We're going to see a zip in. Doesn't look like he's going to go onto, onto Fata, though. I think the guy we just saw there has a big impact in late game as well. Yep, as well. And never underestimate in Enigma in late game. It's, it's difficult. Like, if we're talking very late game, like 50-plus minutes, it's always really hard to go against the Enigma team, especially when you're looking at a lineup they're facing that has one black hole BKB counter, which is Fiend's Grip. So if that guy is accounted for at all, Fata will just be able to black hole whoever he wants. The fight will beat you with a very dangerous positioning, but could pay off big time if they manage to get a good jump here. Paparazzi trying to get some vision with that static remnant. Puppy gets vision first, though the crippling fear. Black hole only on one. They're going to get canceled from that fissure right off the bat. The Midnight Pulse doing a lot of damage. Assassinate coming through. Don't think it's going to be enough. He's actually going to cancel or in the meantime gets the Yules off onto Ace. Not going to follow through for now. Paparazzi actually gets really quick a regen from rune. That's important. For Vici Gaming. So they know black holes on cooldown. They, if they paid attention, they would know Razor used his ultimate. Uh, that was darkness as well. So a lot of stuff used by the Dire. All that Vici used there was the Stampede. So they might look for a play here. They're finding Puppy. Yeah. Regen rune applied to Paparazzi. This is going to be an easy kill onto Night Stalker. You have to think. Lanham is here. TP support coming in though. Telekinesis. Looks like they'll be able to clean up Young Eleven at the very least. That's not a bad trade. One for one. For secret, at least. Yeah, core for support. They're surely happy with this. 
Especially considering Vici Gaming got the jump there, but took them quite a while to kill off Puppy. He has gone for a more tanky item build now, and he has the chainmail. I'm and pretty sure that regen is still applied to Paparazzi. Very scary here to deal with. 15 charges on that Bloodstone. Yapso will be the choice, gets silenced and brought down. Eventually, <laughs> there he goes. This time they... I think Vici are going to play more aggressively on Yapsor. I think they're fed up with how much he gets to do in these fights, so Storm will be maybe changing his uh, approach a little bit going forward, trying to jump the Rubik, surprise him and have any follow-up. When he gets the Orchid, it gets really easy. Then it's actually awful playing Rubik in this game against a, uh, an Orchid. Storm, until then, you can obviously get the lift if you're quick on your fingers and you see him coming in. Yeah, but I think the scary thing for Secret is Vici now has ridiculous initiation. Obviously, we've seen Paparazzi in that storm. We've seen the Blink Dagger on the Centaur. And now we have a Blink available on Lan M. And did we, did we even way. talk about the one on Ori? That's very unusual to see this item build on Death Prophet. That, huh. is, that is very strange. It's probably... He feels like he can't really get in against this lineup because he has to walk through Midnight Pulse, he has to walk through like Bad Vision and Shrapnels, so he feels, okay, if I have a Blink Dagger, maybe I can just Blinking on the back line, catch the Sniper, and take are the you, fight from there. Are you able to Blink out of Yules defensively if there's a Shrapnel or Midnight Pulse down? Yes. Is there I, enough time to do it? it? It depends on your timing. So Yules is two and a half and the cooldown is three, right? So if you do it half a second after taking a damage instance, you should be okay. Uh, I think Shrapnel deals damage, is it every once a second, I believe? Pretty sure. No uh, idea. I'm not sure how often Midnight Pulse does. I think both of them do it once a second, but I could be wrong. And Paparazzi and company grouping up towards this top lane. He is now the top net worth 16 Bloodstone charges. So picked up a couple since uh, buying that bad boy. And looks like Orchid will be the choice for him. Pretty impressive he only died once this game. That was the first blood in mid. Yeah, that's true. Or was it? <laughs> oh, it was one of the first kills at least. Yeah, he died very, yeah, one of the first ones for sure. Mid one with the Mask of Madness, Crystalis. Looks like four staff into Hurricane Pike will be uh, the next next thing for him as Fata. Well, he actually will be going blink potentially. Might be saving for the the BKB first though, depending yeah. on how much gold Keeping he has. Options open here on the quick buy. The which which do you prefer for him right now? If I you think were BKB is better. For sure. He could be into Blink and then... Yeah, the only thing that cancels Octarine, would maybe. be Fiend's Grip, I believe. Yes. Do you, do you think Lincoln's at some point this game after BKB is, is something you look could, for? Or? Could be a luxury after Blink. If he feels like he's having problems with the Bane cancelling his Black Hole, it just wants to have the full confidence that he can't get countered, I could see that. If they feel like they can account for the Bane in some other way, then Fata can get uh, either Octarine Core as a cool introduction item, uh, he can try to get Shiva's Guard if they think that is useful, or can obviously go for a refresher orb, but I don't think I have the mana pool for that with this item build. And, and of course, does not have any talents that help with that. Roshan being destroyed by Vici. Secret, not sure if they knew about it or not, but regardless, did not defend. I hate slacks. I didn't read it. I never read any <laughs> of the stuff he says. We have a smoke, though. This is the first Roshan of the game. It will not have a cheese. <laughs> Thank you. Great to For know. new viewers out there, yeah, cheese is, the... is Roshan 2 and onward. And the fresher shard is Roshan 3 and onward. Thank you, And Sunday. Ion Cannon is Roshan 7 and onward. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Y you make fun of it now, Cinder. It's going to happen at some oh, point. Oh, Paparazzi. Future. Oh, boy. Paparazzi jumps in. Feeling considerable damage. There's the Fiend's Grip. Look at that range. But it gets cancelled right off the bat. Yapsor steals it for himself. He's going to use it on Paparazzi. But again, gets cancelled again. Paparazzi on the other side That's of the figure. Hope stomp. Hope stomp onto two. Here comes the Shrapnel in mid one and the Mask of Madness. On the backside, Ace is taking the brunt of the damage with that Spirit Siphon. He's getting extremely low. Will fall. It'll be a trade of sorts. A one for one oh. for now. Looks like the Spirit Siphon going to work as Paparazzi jumps in again. The Echo Slam off the three or four heroes. A lot of damage being applied. The Storm Spirit will lose Aegis. And Ori getting very low. In fact, looks like Secret might be able to clean up here potentially. But Storm Spirit back with that Aegis. And he's going to try to finish everybody off. Looks like the only remaining member will be Fata on Secret's side. Rare mistake from Fata there. Uh, he changed his mind. He cast Black Hole and he wanted to animation cancel it, but it already got off. So... Um, that is basically why VG Gaming won that fight. The moment that black hole was cancelled, they're like, go, 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 we can all go in. And then they cluster up because they know that play doesn't exist. It's difficult for Shaker to go for that Echo Slam if Enigma is on the sideline there. He'll just immediately black hole after, but with that cooldown out of the window, Vici get the most out of that moment. It did cost them their ages, though, so not all too bad for Secret, all things considered. Like, if you waste a black hole like that, it often has really severe consequences. This was like a, a minor win for Vici, so... Secret can probably reset and 
get ready for the next fight with next black hole. Like Ace is working towards an S and Y right now on the Razor. Uh, Paparazzi, of course, has been pretty much out of control this game. 13k. That's the first time he died, but it was with the Aegis, so it didn't lose any charges. Obviously, one of the best Aegis carriers in the entire game. But that was a pretty fast fight after that Roshan, so he won't be up for a long time, so they won't have that to work with at all. See yep. if Secret tries to capitalize on that or not. Of course, on Secret's side, I wouldn't say a very good Roche team at all. No, uh, absolutely not. Vici can really definitely bad. take it quite fast, so yes. expect them to try to continue with that pressure overall in this game. So the one thing Secret have for Roche is the current medallion on Night Stalker. Probably going to complete a solo crest eventually, um, but aside from that, their lineup indeed not very good at killing Roche. So, uh, I feel like this game is going to be a little bit quiet for a while. I think oh, 75 damage on Centaur. Good. Yes, that is good. He, he hit Stampede. For what reason is unknown. Stampede for what? I don't know. It's actually oh. one of the easiest spells for Rubik to steal in any game. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it's one of the easiest spells to use by mistake. Like, why? <laughs> well, sometimes the R key is... Yeah. You know, you get trigger happy sometimes. It's easy to steal if you're in range. Like, as long as you see him when it's Casper, you know, there's a lot of fights where you can actually use Stampede and it can be impactful, and Rubik can never steal if you're on the other side of the map and you're Stampeding your team. Well, of course. But if it's in, the middle, in the middle of the fight, absolutely, because Centaur's other spells have a decent cast time, so... Indeed. Not too difficult to steal. Currently sitting on Ball Lightning. Uh, something we haven't mentioned at all in this game is how Yapsor's playing with Nullfield. That's obviously oh, something to keep in mind, but let's wait on that. that. Young 11, here, young Air 11. Ball. I've seen that before. Yep. That's what that skill was created for. <laughs> To be missed over and over again. Uh, he has a Saint Shield. We'll be going Halberd. We don't get to see that very often, but obviously if you can... Sniper and Razor. I'd say more against Razor, because you're probably not going to be catching up to Sniper in most cases. He does have the... I believe he has Hurricane Pike, right? Yeah, well, you have... <laughs> what is this? I don't want to read this. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody help Slax out. Tweet at him. Give him all the information you need. He needs all the stats. Give him all the start. information that you can so that he can use none of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paparazzi though, <laughs> he's looking quite good. Going towards the BKB and the build for, for Orion Death Prophet, he has the 10 second BKB now. He, although he's been dying a lot, he still has a very good net worth and very defensive build means he's going to stay alive that much longer. Yep. I have to ask you though, did you at least get the reference of Slexus? I didn't read it. Okay. I just laughed because you were laughing. So I know you. I, just I know it. you absolutely despise rap music and hip hop in general. Yes. You do not like it, but the reference was to. No, I forgot his name. That's pretty bad. That's gonna make me look. Thanks for bringing it up, Cinderin. <laughs> Thanks for wasting everybody's time. Well, I can't. I think of it. Notorious B.I.G. There we go. Okay. There, there we you go. go. You I got, got it, it, buddy. I got it back. I my mind just. Froze I've heard for of that guy. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Meantime. <laughs> Shadowplay. Have you actually even heard the name before? No, I have. You have? I have. It's, I, uh, I feel like it's if a you basketball would, player, if, right? If you, yeah, absolutely. If you would like, if you would like any rap music, it would probably be Notorious B.I.G. Okay, that would be something. For I'll you. definitely check it out. Not Puppy and Company are smoked up. Yapsor with the telekinesis, assassinated on its way. Great the nightmares fisher. there, though. He's gonna pop the BKB and avoid the damage. Here comes the zip in by Paparazzi. Quanta. He comes in with the black hole only on one, but it's a lot of damage being applied to Ori. So has the BKB applied to Cyclone. Not going to keep him alive. The oh. Echo Slam out to a huge damage. Ace trying to finish off some heroes. The Nightmares are very good this game, but it's a two for two. The Sniper dead for Secret. It looks like they're on the run. Is Ace the double kill for Paparazzi. Lan M looks like he's going to get zipped down by Yapsor, who stole that Storm Spirit ultimate. It's out of mana. That is oh definitely a concern. God, no Paparazzi, the hook stop connects into the double edge. Triple kill for Paparazzi. Fata again, the lone survivor. He, was, he did a lot of damage with that black hole. He was millimeters, or should I say inches, away from getting a two-man black hole there. If you got Storm in that hole, that's a big team fight win yes. for Secret. So on the edge right there for Vici Gaming, Paparazzi doing a great job. This is something that, uh, you know, you have to be careful with with Storm. A lot of the time you can start tunnel visioning in fights. You just jump a guy, you want to do as much damage as possible. Paparazzi's being, he's jumping a lot around. He's not doing the maximal amount of damage at all with his Storm Spirit plays, but he's making it as hard as possible for Secret to isolate him and bring him down in the fight. And oh I boy. really like what he's doing here. He's gonna oh, start he up. gets this kill. Onto the Sniper. Puppies here with a crippling fear, though. They might be able to get this. Pops that BKB, zips away with very low HP. He's on the other side of the map. I mean, he does have 23 Bloodstone charges after all. Not gonna... Not gonna stay any further. We'll just go back to base, play this quite disciplined. Does, does not, not want to feel good to use your first BKB like that. 
Well, it's better than dying. So. Don't blame him for trying on that sniper kill. I think most players would do the same there. It's in the middle of nowhere, if Sniper TP's in and there's no backup behind him, he will die in mere seconds. But quick reaction from Puppy on the silence, and then Enigma stun to force the BKB. Lan M is going to have a huge impact on this game. Maybe not right now, because he might be found out. Sentry is placed. Static link. Nice stampede. Second See if they have maybe. any more vision. Paparazzi's here to save the day, potentially. Hoofstone applied into the double edge, and it looks like Puppy will find his way to the grave. Well, or Paparazzi, very low, H or very low on mana. Maybe they'll have to take him down here. Does have the deniability with the Bloodstone. We'll see if he has to use it or not. Nice fissure onto two. The urn keeping Paparazzi a little bit healthier. And it looks like he should be able to get away unless Secret really want to dive this further. Ori just vanished in that fight. He got targeted by Sniper for like three seconds and just fell. Oh, yeah, Absor really looking for that. Should be a kill here. Centaur. Let's get the Telekinesis. Oh, they're a bit scared of yeah, the response. They, they actually don't have the vision here. For us, it looks like an easy kill, but Secret don't feel confident. They, if they had any vision in this left side of the map, they would have probably committed for that Centaur kill, but what if backup is behind him? They now back we out. see the, the Halberd picked up. Yep, good item here. He, they need to protect Ori better than this. He can't just run in like that and get blown up. Uh, the Death Prophet had minimal impact in that fight, and she is still a very integral part of their lineup. We're obviously talking a lot about Storm. He is the big hero right now. He's not going to be able to do it on his own. Uh, this Halberd could help if this Medusa, or Medusa, that's right, if this Death Prophet jumps in, Centaur follows through with the Halberd on Sniper, they can feel pretty safe in Death Prophet not dying at least during oh that boy. Halberd duration. We have an Arcane Rune on Paparazzi, that's, that's a little scary. Good rune on Storm. I think it's Storm's third best rune. I mean, I think he ranks number one on at least three runes <laughs> uh, holding. Double damage. He's the Arguably the regen, best for regen. Arcane, double damage. And there's still double damage. He's maybe top five, but yeah. double damage right. PA is something. Yeah, young eleven doesn't have a whole lot of mana. Is going to have to pop that stampede. The mouth is keeping him in place, and the assassin not quite enough to actually get the kill. But Yapsor with the double edge, typically the worst skill to get on a Rubik, will actually find the kill with it. Deals a lot of damage with the aggressive null field as well. I wanted to talk about that earlier. That Yapsor for the majority of this game has been playing with aggressive null field. Um, with his lineup, it makes a lot of sense, but the defensive one is not bad either for his team as we see a dead dog. Uh, it's Puppy gonna be close. All right, the figure finished the mop. Ace a little bit too late to the party. Doesn't have a whole lot of mana to speak of, though. And Vici Gaming are gonna be happy with another Bloodstone charge added to Paparazzi. At what point does he become almost, let's say, I was gonna say unkillable, but yeah, we'll just say unkillable. 24 charges right now. He's unkillable if he doesn't get black hold already. I think. In BKB, they can't touch this guy, so... Um, during Black Hole, I think if Sniper gets another damage item, I think he will always be susceptible. Like, right now, he might not even die in a Black Hole if he has BKB off. Like, uh, Sniper does not hit that hard just yet, and Storm has 11 armor, and will be getting a Shivers. At least at that point, he will survive, mm -hmm. sure. So, I'm um, still clearly favoring Vici in this game, just because of the position the Storm Spirit is in, but it doesn't take much of a slip-up to get Enigma. It's one good black hole that will allow Secret to... Well, not only the heroes, damage. but I mean, last game, if that's any indication. That's true. Just giving Secret in general a second life. Not that they're very far behind right now. I guess the good news for Vici is that statistically they have a higher win rate against Secret if they do not have a 15,000 gold lead to throw away, so... Yep, that's true. They have a better chance. Indeed. Here goes Roche. This will be used. a big moment. It will. Double damage applied to Paparazzi. He's going to do a lot of damage this fight. They're going to find Ace off the bat, or he's going to pop BKB. Looks like the Earthshaker is going to be going down. Big black hole onto four heroes. Do they have the damage to follow it up, though, is the real question. It doesn't look like it as Yapsor gets taken down. It's a double kill for Paparazzi. Mid one still applying a lot of pressure from the high ground. Nobody's really going towards him. It's a two for one. Earthshaker will be up in 60 seconds. Didn't get to use really any spells. He could not have got a bla better black hole than that. That was the absolutely best possible play in the fight from Fata, and it still wasn't enough. The double damage storm, and they're staying alive with this really tanky centaur. 3,000 health and hood, halberd, evasion. Well, you kind of brought it up in the beginning of the game. They have the black hole as far as team fight is concerned. And what else is there? Yeah, Plasma field is really pretty negligible at this point. I think. I actually think Secret's problem right now is mid one's item build more than anything. It's, I understand where he's coming from, getting some of these defensive items. Like, he feels like I'm playing in Storm Spirit, I have to protect myself and right. be able to escape. But the fact of the matter is that even these great black holes, where's the damage? This sniper does not hit hard. He has a Crystalis, a Pike, a BKB, and Mask of Madness. This is 15,000 net worth, of which maybe 3k effectively contributes to significant damage. There's not that Daedalus, there isn't that maybe, uh, I what, guess the old MTB would have been good. But what would you sub in then? 
How would you? I think he f finishes the Daedalus. And I, you know, it's just it's just really difficult, right? Like, that's why the Storm pick is so good, because if there was no Storm in this game, I can guarantee you mid one was not be itemizing like this. He would be getting very different items. But at this point, I think you definitely finish Daedalus, and then you might go for a secondary damage item right after that, and you just play with what you have. You have BKB and Pike. I don't think you can get more defensive items now. Yep. So, I don't know if a value Deso could have been a thing this game. I'm not that big a fan of the item in general on Sniper, but... Like, they just need anything to kill heroes with Kush. You see, like, it's the same story for Razor, right? Like, that's just the nature of the hero. If he doesn't get a good static link off, his damage is also pretty insignificant. Yeah. His all defensive items, Sancho Yasha, Hood, Drum, and uh, Ring of Aquila, so... Well, this next few minutes for Team Secret will be very crucial indeed. We have a Storm Spirit who's essentially unkillable in most situations, now with an Aegis. And they have cheese this time on Ori. I think that's actually the bigger thing, because Ori's yeah. the one dying in fights. And he's always, like... 10 HP, and then he yules himself, and yeah. he has no way to really get out. It's just uh, this is yeah, that's pretty scary. One of the secret. best heroes in, in the game to have cheese on, I think. Storm is obviously a great candidate as well. They could have considered doing that, but obviously you want the Aegis on Death Prophet is really bad. Oh, is Centaur going for a heart? Is he really doing this? Oh, it looks my like goodness, that's that is oh, that's so good. That's a lot of damage on Stampede. Yes. And... He didn't go for the the return aura though, or the what is it called? Yeah, the return strength damage, but either way, looks like we're gonna have some action. Paparazzi jumps in onto Puppy. They're gonna find that kill. Another Bloodstone charge for him. He's just gonna zip on it again. Remember, he does have Aegis. Looks like we have it. Okay, the Black Hole. Was that canceled? canceled? Oh no, for Secret. Fata now on the run as Vici Gaming are invading their base. That's two kills in the blink of an eye. And all they lose is the Bane Elemental. Lan M with the Enchant Totem, another zip in. Looks like Ori has an Exorcism applied. Echo Slam goes off. It's a three for one now for Vici, and with that exorcism, you have to think they're going to attempt to go high ground if the creeps are... And they are. There's two siege creeps, in fact. Good lord. I'm really impressed with Fenrir's play this game with how little farm he has on the Bane. Getting late game key grips like that is not that easy. Yeah, 38 minutes. Forced to buy back out of Enigma, but they know that the black hole is down. Paparazzi, he's getting pretty low, but again, still has Aegis to work with. Ori's exorcism has now expired. But Young Eleven trying to aggro that tower so he can take it down with that return. They'll be able to get the tier three, if not more. From Team Secret trying to even this game, but they're going to zip on in oh, onto Fata with the Fissure. Now. It's going to be close. He's going to force up the other side of the, the Fissure. Ori jumps in as well, mid one with the BKB attempting to get out, but will not do so. That's a godlike streak for Paparazzi, who's unstoppable right now. No, he's godlike. Wants to, he wants to use that Aegis. Shut your mouth <laughs> as this Rax looks like it will fall. And Team Secret on, on the backside here will lose that bottom Rax. And the question is, will Vici continue on knowing that Sniper is dead for 60 seconds? Absolutely, they have nothing to beg off for. They Young Eleven with that heart. Oh, look at this positioning from him. Three towers being damaged by him. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit zoning everyone out. He gets Telekinese, but pretty sure he could just zip away to safety. Another minute 20 on He's that He's trying Aegis. to communicate with us. What does it say? It says D. <laughs> Destruction, I believe, as this mid Rax go down. Look at this, these tier four towers just getting decimated by Centaur. Still has Stampede to work with as well. Remember, lots of damage can be applied with that. Thanks to all that strength gain, he's, he's gotten on the hero with that heart. And the okay. tier three top is next. No sniper for 18 seconds. Paparazzi jumps in again. Fate Bolt is there. Looks like he's gonna try to take out this puppy Night Stalker again. Get actually does go down to the Orchid. So the tier three tower, still standing for now, but you have to think that's gonna keep going here. Sniper though is back. So does Vici continue on? They still have Aegis for another 30 seconds. They have to be very careful with the timing here. But of course, even if he dies without Aegis, he's going to be up pretty much instantly. He's going to zip on in again, this time onto Razor. He will die finally. Echo Slam onto Echo. two with the Fissure. And that should do it. GG's come out. And Vici Gaming have tied this up, turned this series into a best of three. I think there's a couple of things to highlight in this game from Vici Gaming. I think Paparazzi got a lot out of this game on the Storm Spirit. Obviously, had a great matchup in the game, took advantage of it. Uh, I was trying to get the time to talk about this uh, Bane, getting a couple of key fiend scripts, especially the one outside Secret Space where he gets the instant cancel on a good black hole from Fata.